We would like first to say thank you so much to Rabbi Menachem for inviting us to be here and to say it's a great honor to be with all of you and see the impressive work that you're doing for Holocaust Remembrance. It's tremendous. Um, my husband and I are performing artists. He's a concert pianist, I'm an opera singer. But our lives were forever changed when my husband was completing his doctorate at Columbia University, and I had been teaching there. And we happened to live in an apartment building filled with Holocaust survivors, mostly from Germany, but from other nations as well, Czech Republic, uh, Poland. And they became beloved friends. I'll say mishpocha for us. We loved them very, very much. They entrusted to us the honor of knowing their stories and the horrors of what they had seen which I recorded, I wrote down, I wrote a book about it. But we also felt that being that we are performers, the best way we could fulfill our promise to bring their stories back to Europe and to perpetuate the memory of the Holocaust was using performing arts. So, uh, we began our work in 2008 and established, an, well, actually we had been working before that time doing Holocaust memorial concerts and uh, performing in every venue possible we could for Zionist organizations in New York City and also in Norway. Uh, my husband is a Norwegian, I'm an American, and we had moved back to Norway. But International Voice of Justice, our organization, was established in 2008 with the mission of Holocaust education through music and theater. Um, this work began while living in Upper Manhattan as a result of the influence of survivors who became our dear friends. As we promised to take their stories back to Europe and have endeavored to do so, uh, we have produced opera, Holocaust memorial concerts, and theater productions in many nations of Europe. In producing Holocaust projects, we have used mediums such as solo voice, solo instruments, chorus, orchestra, theater, visual arts, and classical dance. We would like to share with you a few examples of our work the productions themselves are an hour and a half, two hours long, so we just took tiny little bits of them to share with you what we're doing. Our first project was a musical drama with 11 songs and monologues based on the lives of victims of the Holocaust, many of whom were our beloved friends. The hour-long production, Voices of the Holocaust, text Martha Smith, music Mary Lee Eckert and Martha Smith, has been performed in many nations of Europe, here in Riga with Rabbi Bar Kahan, and in the United States of America. This is an excerpt from the work, Anna Frank's Song. In 2010, International Voice of Justice produced Beethoven's opera Fidelio, a Holocaust memorial opera in Warsaw, Uch, Lublin, Krakow, and Wroclaw, Poland. 
The opera was taken out of its original setting of a political prison in Spain in the 1600s and was placed in Auschwitz, 1945. The production received standing ovations in each city in Poland and critical acclaim from Opera UK, the world's leading opera magazine. The journalists reviewing the production found the films used in the overtures from pre-war, pre-World War II and wartime Poland and Europe particularly effective and moving. The opera's original title was The Triumph of Marital Love. And consequently, we have chosen this excerpt, which was filmed in Amsterdam during the war, along with photos of Hungarian deportees to Auschwitz from the second act overture, the Leonora overture, toward the end of the overture. If you look closely, all those in attendance at the wedding have the David, Magen David on their clothes. Stop it there. A little technical problem, sorry. Thank you. I wish there was time to show you the whole overture, but we're limited, so just to give you a little taste. Um, another project we've done um, is that of a solo play called Hannah's Treasure Box. It was premiered in the south of France in 2011 and has since been performed in many venues in France, including the Rashi Center for Jewish Art and Culture in Paris and in a Broadway theater festival in New York City. Six-year-old Hannah lives with her family on an island in the north of Norway they know only that their ancestors fled Spain, but Hannah does not know why. Hannah knows nothing about the Inquisition or her Sephardic roots, but she begins to have dreams from the time of the Inquisition, which serve as a warning for her family to flee Nazi-occupied Norway to Sweden. This saves her life and the lives of her family. enfants, ma mère me chantait cette berceuse chaque soir avant de m'entendre. Assez étrangement, je n'avais jamais porté attention au fait que les paroles sont en espagnol alors que nous sommes norvégiens. Ma mère disait que cette berceuse est dans notre famille depuis notre arrivée ici, à Elgoa, il y a très longtemps. 
Nos ancêtres ont émigré d'Espagne pour la Norvège des siècles auparavant. Et ils se sont installés sur cette petite île où j'ai passé la quasi-totalité de mon enfance. C'est sans doute pour cela que les membres de ma famille ont tous les yeux sombres, les cheveux noirs et le teint mat, ce qui nous différencie vraiment de nos compatriotes norvégiens blonds au teint clair. Alors que je grandissais dans ce désert aux longs et sombres hivers et aux journées d'été où le soleil ne se couche pas, j'étais loin d'imaginer que cette berceuse allait se révéler être l'une des clés de l'identité de ma famille. J'avais six ans et c'était la guerre. La Norvège a été envahie par les Allemands en avril 1940. Bien que la nouvelle soit parvenue jusqu'à nous assez rapidement, ce n'est qu'un peu plus tard que nous en avons pris réellement conscience. Un jour, j'étais dans la maison et j'étais en train de jouer avec ma poupée, quand tout à coup, une forte explosion a, soulevé la maison, a secoué la maison. Je courus à la fenêtre et il semblait véritablement que Tromso était en feu. Papa a toujours été très fort. Tout de suite, il a su comment me réconforter. Il m'a dit, n'aie pas peur Anna, c'est loin d'ici. Ils ne s'intéresseront pas à nous. Elgoa n'est pas important pour les Allemands. Nous ne pensions pas que, que la guerre arriverait vraiment jusqu'à Elgoa. Mais une semaine plus tard, le Simavik Powerplant a été bombardé. Et le même jour, des navires de guerre britanniques ont été bombardés par l'aviation allemande. Des éclairs de lumière striaient le ciel, suivis de près de fortes explosions. C'était vraiment terrifiant. Je me souviens encore de maman qui me tenait fort contre elle pour calmer ma peur. Later in the play, Hannah goes with her father to Tromsø and witnesses a group of Norwegian Jews being prepared for deportation. While she's there with her father, her father speaks with one of them. He's observed and the family is reported to the local Gestapo, but because of Hannah's dreams, they are able to flee to Sweden and escape. Um, this play actually traces the persecution of the Jewish people from the time of the Spanish Inquisition to the present, and at the end it tells of the attacks that have been going on in the Norwegian school system and in the Norwegian press against the Jewish people currently in Norway. Um, the next project I'd like to speak about is one of our current projects. It is a play based on the rescue of Bulgarian Jews. 11,343 Jews from Thrach and Macedonia, which were newly annexed Bulgarian territories, had already been secretly deported to Treblinka and murder. Shortly thereafter, news came to the dep Deputy Secretary of the Bulgarian Parliament, Dimitar Peshev, of impending deportations of Jews that would take place across Old Bulgaria at midnight that same night. Peshev immediately took a stand against the deportations, which eventually halted the operation. However, it cost Peshev everything when the fascist prime minister sought revenge. Peshev was censored as deputy speaker of the parliament and became persona non grata. Nonetheless, Peshev, together with Metropol Stefan, the head bishop of the Church of Bulgaria, served as a catalyst to end the deportations, saving nearly 50,000 Jewish lives. Another play, Our Grandfather's Secrets, presenting the Holocaust of Romania's Jews and Roma peoples, is awaiting production, first in Timisoara and then elsewhere in Romania. A film of the play will also be given to schools throughout Romania as a teaching tool for instruction on the Holocaust in that nation. 
And finally, we would like to close our presentation with Elie Wiesel's cry from the Voices of the Holocaust, a short song, and I believe it represents the heart of each of us here today. We'd like to present to Rabbi Menachem a book that I received last week in the Norwegian Landmark Preservation Office, where they proudly presented a project between Shamir Latvia and the Jewish Museum of Oslo. If you would come up, please, and Hoken, if you would please present that. You have such a great voice. Thank you. Amazing. It's right over there. I gave it to you, Hoken. It's right there. Hoken, it's there. I gave it to you. <laughs> Pardon us. <laughs> We're working together on 10 years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. I hope God gave you a long time of living. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And oh, you too, Rabbi. dear Rabbi. Thank you. Demand your, your concert at the next conference. <laughs>